Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I'm going to explain about short key defect in a crystal. Short key defect is very important for your bachelor's and master's degree. In my previous video, I have already explained about vacancy defect in a crystal. I'll put the link in the description below. You will check. You can check from there. So, what is short key defect? And uh, what is the formula related to it? In this video, we are going to derive the formula, mathematical formula of it as well. So let's start. So first of all, let's write the definition for the short key defect in a crystal. So it is a kind of defect. It is a it is a kind of defect. It is a kind of defect in a crystal. In a crystal in which in which n in which n equal number of in which n equal number of cation and anion anion are missing from the crystal lattice let's try to understand with a schematic diagram of it so these are the lattice sites these are the lattice sites in a crystal okay let us consider this is occupied by a cation this is occupied by an anion so similarly this is cation anion cation anion now this what's up suppo what's supposed no 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 this one is should be anion so this one was supposed to be occupied by cation now let's make it vacant cation anion cation anion cation anion cation anion cation now you can see over here here i have uh kept two vacant over here this this one was supposed to be cation this one was supposed to be anion they are vacant right so this type of defect is called short key defect in a crystal now this is very common in those crystals which have um, almost comparable or almost equal size of cation and anion can you tell some example related to it Mm, yes, you are thinking correct. I think if you are thinking sodium chloride, potassium chloride, cesium chloride, then you are thinking correct. These type of crystals have short key defect in them. Uh, now, what is the characteristic of this short key defect? As you can see over here, one cation and one anion are missing from their crystal lattice. Then obviously the mass will decrease, right? The mass will decrease. Now, similarly, if cation and anion are decreasing then volume will increase slightly so the density of it will be what will be the value of density what is the formula m by v now if m is decreasing and v is increasing then obviously the value of rho will increase as well right and the electrical neutrality will be maintained by the equal number of cation and anion that is being vacated so now, as you have understood about the short key defect in a crystal, now let's go to the derivation of it. So the derivation of short key defect proceeds in a similar way as we did in vacancy defect. First of all, we need to write the expression for the entropy. As we know that if there is a creation of defect, the entropy will increase, right? So the entropy the entropy of a crystal of a crystal with a with a short key defect with a short key defect is given as is given as what is the formula del s is equal to k into ln w this is equation number one where this k is the Boltzmann constant where this k is the Boltzmann constant and this w w is the probability probability this is the equation number one now we need to proceed to the derivation now we know that the uh, we know that there are n cations n cations that is that can be represented as n a plus and n anions n anions 
missing missing from the crystal lattice having total n number of cations and anions so this is the total number of total pair we can write total pair total number of cation and anion pair this n means a uh, total number of cation as well as anion that is missing from the crystal lattice now this w w means probability this probability will be equal to see in this case there will be two probabilities in which the uh, the cation and anion may live or may disappear one for the cation this is for the cation this is the disappearance or probability of disappearance of cation and this is the probability of disappearance of anion we are writing w we are representing both of them by w the reason for that is uh, equal number of cation and anion will get disappeared right will leave will make a vacancy now uh, this value that value of w w means probability that is given to that is given by the formula n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial this is the formula to uh, calculate the value of the probability let us consider this to be equation number two where this to capital n is the total number of cation anion pairs this small n is the total number of cation and anions anions that are missing that create the vacancy right let us consider that to be equation number two and uh, this is small w okay now total total probability total probability that is capital w will be equal to that is w into w right that means w square that will be n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorials whole square we get this much right now let us use this value that is equation number three in equation number one what will we get using it in equation number one we get we get so what was our equation number one it was del s is equal to k l and w right let us put this value over here so we get del s is equal to k into ln into uh, sorry no not into ln w w means how much n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorials whole square right now according to the rule of logarithm according to the rule of logarithm this two will come in front right so it will be del s is equal to 2 k ln n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial let us consider this to be equation number four now let's move forward now we need to put the value of equation number four that is the value of del s in the equation of helmholtz free energy the the helmholtz free energy the helmholtz free energy equation is given by the helmholtz free energy equation is given by that is del a is equal to del e minus minus this is supposed to be minus t del s this is the formula to calculate the value of del a that is helmholtz free energy this is minus okay let us consider this to be equation number five this is equation number five now let's put the value of del s over here from equation number four what was the value of equation number four over here right let us put the value of del s from equation number four in equation number five so so equation five becomes equation five becomes what will we get del a is equal to del e minus del e minus t into 2 k l n this is n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial right 
now we know that this del e is for the entire crystal if there is n vacancy then obviously n short key defect then this will be written as n e s n e s minus 2 k t ln n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial right where this es is the average energy required to create one short key defect so for n short key defect this will be n e s this is equation number five sorry six this del a is the equation number six now we need to differentiate this equation with respect to small n we are doing everything same just as in vacancy defect okay so uh, differentiating differentiating this equation differentiating this equation with respect to small n at constant temperature at constant temperature so what will we get del by del n uh, del a at constant temperature t that is del del a by del n at constant temperature t will be equal to how much uh, es the differentiation of small n with respect to small n will be 1 minus 2 k t del by del n ln n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial we get this much i hope you understood everything till over here let us consider this to be equation number seven now we need to find the value of this much okay we need to find the value of del by del n ln and every other thing by using stirling's approximation i'll just tell you what stirling's approximation is now using using stirling's approximation using stirling's approximation stirling's approximation means if we have a value that is ln x factorial it will be x ln x x ln x minus x this is stirling's approximation okay so if we use this approximation in above in previous equation what do we get so so equation 7 so equation 7 becomes so equation 7 becomes so what does equation 7 become it will be i'll directly write it over here okay so ln n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial will be equal to ln n factorial minus ln n factorial minus ln n minus n factorial we use the rule of logarithm that is ln a b by c can be written as ln a plus ln b minus ln c something like this okay we have a rule something like this so if we now use uh stillings approximation over here then and cancelling the like terms with different sign will directly get this much i'll directly write the answer you try to do on your own and if you have any confusion just visit my previous video i have done that properly truly in that video so we get this much n ln n minus n ln n minus n minus n ln n minus n let us consider this to be equation number uh, 8 so we get this much now if we differentiate it with respect to small n that's what we were trying to do then so if we differentiate it with respect to small n that is del ln by del n no 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 let's not write it like this okay so if we differentiating this value with respect to small n that is del by del n ln n factorial by n factorial into n minus n factorial 
and factorial uh, yes so we will directly get a value I'll directly write the value okay you just do it if you have any confusion just visit my previous video if you differentiate it with, res with respect to small n and use product law over here and keep cancelling every related term then you get um, a final value of ln n minus n by n so we get this value this is equation number nine i've directly returned the value you can just uh, do everything line by line okay in a, in a proper step then if we put this value in equation number what was the equation uh, equation number seven if we use this value in equation number seven using using nine in equation seven we get we using nine equation in equation number seven we get so del a by del n del a by del n at constant temperature t will be equal to ts minus 2 k t ln n minus n by n so we get this much and at equilibrium at equilibrium this left hand side value will turn to zero so zero will be equal to E s minus 2 k t ln n minus n by n l minus n by n E s will be equal to if this whole value will come this it comes this side this negative sign will change to positive so it will be 2 k t ln n minus n by n and uh, let's take this 2 k t to this side so it will be Yes by yes by 2 k t is equal to ln n minus n by n or if we take remove this ln then we need to put an exponential over here right so it will be n minus n by n is equal to exponential of es by yes by 2 k t or uh okay so if we know that this n is the total number of cation anion pair and this is the total number of short key defect present right so we know that total number of atom will be very high as compared to number of short key defect so n minus n uh n minus n can be written as n minus n can be written as n because this is very small this is very small so in this case it will be n by n is equal to exponential yes by exponential yes by 2 kt now if we find the value of small n this will be small n is equal to n exponential of minus yes by 2 kt so this is the formula for the number of short key defect present in a crystal and here this es is the average energy required to create one short key defect k means boltzmann constant t is ex, uh, absolute temperature and this capital n is the total number of uh, atoms that is cation anion um, cation anion uh, pair present in a crystal this is the required derivation so this one was all about short key defect in a crystal. I hope you understood everything about this video. If you like the video, please share this video as much as you can. And thank you for watching the video.